Hi everybody, Martin the Flick and Feathers again today and I'm tying an Emergent Sedge, an Emergent Caddis Pupa As always I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel get access to the members only content and be eligible for the giveaways and of course please remember to subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos that's always appreciated so the hooks in my vise, it's a size 10 camera's in B420, right, so it's a Yorkshire Sedge model um, obviously if you use a different brand you can you know, use the equivalent uh, and I've run on some Uni 8 and Tan now when I get to the hook point I'm going to catch in my rib which is just a fine gold wire I'm going to take it around the bend I'm going to come quite far and then right, you know, right around I'm going to build a decent size uh, a decent length of abdomen in this now the abdomen dubbing is some SLF and it's a wee blend, I've used some bright green fluorescent yellow and a wee bit of pale olive just to get the colour I like but obviously you can tie these in different colours, you can tie them olives and tans to sort of suit the caddis where you live and where you're fishing I'm going to dub this on and I'm using quite a lot of dubbing here, I want quite a fat abdomen I want it to look almost overdubbed especially in the midsection there um, So don't be shy. Now and I'm going to brush it so it, although it might look like too much at the moment it will sort of slim down a bit. So once you've got that ready you can come up with your rib and I'm going to come in quite close turns about six probably six or seven wraps up the, bo up the body here. When you get to the front, come across your thread, tie that off, bend and break it away. I'm going to take a wee pinch more dubbing, just to make the front edge of the abdomen, not the rib wire. Um, because I'm going to tie in a rubber leg and the dubbing's a wee bit softer and it sort of lets the legs seat better gives you a bit more control so I've got two legs here uh, and they're size small round rubber right, you can use you could use silicon if you liked but I think the the round rubber's better, it's a bit tougher. Now I'm just going to offer these on, on top, a couple of loose wraps of thread and then pull them under, dead easy. And I'll just wind the back and you don't need to kill it with tension, right, just enough is lock it in place and then I'll start on my hair's ear dubbing. We've got a wee pinch of this. And again, the dubbing helps you with your rubber leg. Um, the leg doesn't want to kick against the dubbing in the same way as it does when the thread bites into the, the leg. So just sort of tie that off there. 
I'm not going to trim the legs yet. Uh, they're easier to manipulate if you leave them a wee bit long. Now my wing pad, I'm using Raffine, right? Uh, sort of tan or brown. It's just, and I've opened out the strip and I'm going to cut myself a strip that I want twice the length or twice the width, sorry, of the my wing my wing bud. So I've got this now and what if still a bit thick. I'm going to just thin this down a wee bit more. There we go. I'm going to fold this lengthwise. So I've got a doubled, a doubled over wing pad like that. And I'll just sort of knock the corners off it to make it look a bit more natural. Now, you can moisten it if you like to make it a bit easier to tie in. And I'm going to offer it in, I'll do my side first. Offer it in so the wing pad is coming about halfway along the abdomen and the top of the wing is level with the back of the fly. Two or three wraps. Give it a check. That's fine. Trim away the waist. And then we'll do the same on your side. Make sure it's folded how I like it. You might need to unravel it and fold it again. Um, to make sure it's nice and clean, the fold. There we go. And same again, just knock the corners off. And then offer it and fold up the creases up the open sides at the bottom loose wrap to gather it and then tighten up a wee bit short we should go back again a loose wrap and then tighten better And just take both of them back, and you can see that the raffine sort of that it holds the rubber leg out of the way. Just trim away the waist. Now at this stage, you can come in and cut these. Now that you, you don't need to worry so much about trying to position them. I, I like about. an abdomen length, or half an abdomen. Um, however you measure it, I, I take like an abdomen length from the wing, but it, all, it seems to work, it, that works with it half an abdomen from the back of the hook. It's just up to yourself. Take this into the front, just tidy everything up. And then you can come in with a wee pinch of dubbin. You don't need a huge amount here, just enough just to you can create a wee pad and then you can, while well, you're still on the dub tread, pull the rubber legs back and the dubbing can sort of force them. Again, it's better than the thread, it will help to control them slightly. Make sure they're on the underside. And then I'll just come in, trim these so they're just longer than the gape of the hook. And then we can tie in a hackle. I'm going to get a brown partridge hackle from the back of the bird. And you can use a feather that's a bit longer than you might necessarily use. 
uh, on a 10, right? It's, it can be, you want quite a long, sort of leggy, straggly effect. So, I'm just going to tie this in by the tip. Fold the tip back. And I'll just come in with my scissors here. It's a bit fiddly, so I'll just cut it away. And then, just fold the hackle, double it as you wind it. I'm going to use it all up. Tie it off. Take the stem forward and fold it back. Tie it back over it. Keep your thread tight. Break that away. Now, What is it? Encourage the hackle to be mostly on the underside. Just stroke it down. Tie back. You can leave a wee bit on top um, if you want. And then just get some more dubbing. And I'm just taking it, as I say, I like to take it from the mask for this. I want. Quite a lot of guard here. I take some from the ear and some from the nose, so I've got some longer fibres in amongst it. And I'm going to make a short, quite a short, heavy rope. And I'm going to put on too much. Right. I'll just stretch that a wee bit. Right, that's, it should be like, at the moment you can see it looks, it's quite overdubbed. A couple of tons of thread, and then I'll just whip finish. Put another one on. See, you know it. And the last thing is just to get in about it with the grill crow. There we go, quite happy with that. And I've got this wee shaggy, buggy looking thorax blending into that like the translucent sort of halo of the, the SLF dubbing you don't really see it uh, on the camera because it's no, it's been lit from your side but when you view this from below or it's backlit, it's very very translucent and I think that's why it works so well um, but as I say well worth, well worth using on the, the lochs and the lakes and in the rivers, but um, I sort of tend to think of this as like still water, caddis pupa. Summer's nights, you can stick this on, murder some poo in the point, one of these on the dropper, or vice versa, uh, especially if you're twitching them, certainly catches a lot of fish. As I say, you can adjust the colour. Got a tan version here, a wee bit darker. Up to you. Greens, tans, olives, that kind of colour. So, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines, guys. Bye.